Classroom lecture capture technology. Is it worth it to me as a teacher? My name is John Botting, and this is a digital version of a presentation that I gave at a teaching and learning conference. So to begin, these are the things we'll go through. Um, I'll provide you first the present uh, demonstration of classroom lecture tech technology in actual uh, I'll, I'll show you a bit of a video. I'll outline the context for the study. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, discuss briefly the problem that made me think to do a study. I'll outline more specifically the, the inquiry that um, I pursued. Of course, the research questions that go with that inquiry, the methods, the results, and a discussion. In this video, we'll look at what a Tegrity recording that I've done for one of my classes looks like. First, this is Blackboard here. I'm going into one of my courses. And you'll see that uh, the way I've arranged Blackboard, students immediately, when they open up their course, come to um, course materials. And for each lecture, I post the um, notes and support materials that I use in the lesson as well as lesson videos. I'll uh, add those at the end of the lesson. I come back to my office and put in the lesson number and uh, a link to those lessons. So let's look at one of these videos, see what the student sees. Bad, good, excellent, but it, they're groups. They're not individuals, they're groups. Ranked is first, second, third. So you're, you're taking the individuals and giving them a position, right? You're giving them labels. I know these look like numbers, but you can't do math with these numbers. Unlike these ones over here, the quantity variables, we can do math with that stuff. We have two of them, two types. We have discrete and we have continuous. Okay, so I will um, discuss what you're seeing in front of you here in more detail uh, a little bit later on. But one of the things that I will briefly mention is that I like about this technology is on the right side, you have the technical stuff that, that the student um, can study uh, as if they were in the class. And they will have, uh, what you see is, a, this is a PDF that I'm marking up um, on the right side. And they can also print out those PDFs and have them on, in paper form, in form in front of them. So that's the technical side of it, you might say, about the, what I'm teaching. But on, on the left side, what you have is me me standing, me talking, and I think that allows for the um, human interaction, that emotional component, emotional connection, uh, you know, with the teacher, with the course. So not just w connection with the knowledge and the technical stuff on the right side, which is important, of course, but also that emotional connection on the left side with a person. Um, this is why I like to have a video of me as I'm teaching and not just of the uh, technical stuff. Okay, let's move on. The context for this, uh, I was teaching in a branch campus, a Western branch campus in the Middle East. Um, at this campus, we had a lot of money for um, instructional technologies and so on. Um, and so we had a lot of sophisticated instructional technologies. Uh, for example, we had smart boards, document cameras, video conferencing, and a, a whole lot of other things that were, were available to us as teachers. Now, the problem is um, there was so much instructional technology that a, a lot of it was going underutilized. Now, why might that be? Well, teachers don't know how to use all these different technologies. And also, there was nobody who was, who was, whose job it was to teach the teachers how to use the technology. 
and especially when you have somebody who is going to train teachers how to use instructional technology, that person who's, who is going to do the training has to know what it's like to be a teacher, how they want to interact with their students in different ways, what the goals of the courses are, what the objectives of the courses are, and all of these things. So it can't be a, a person who's totally technical. The, the person has to understand the world of teaching because teachers, a lot of times, they'll use technology in strange ways because it, it helps them do what they want to do, helps them to get out of the course what they want to get out of the course. So um, there was nobody uh, on my campus whose job that was. Uh, it's also difficult to get just the technical support when something breaks down. When you're teaching a lesson, you need it to start on time, finish on time, without any major interruptions. You know, you have a large group of people there in front of you, um, and they're all waiting for you to, to deliver, to deliver the lesson, to engage them in learning. And if you're really depending on technology, technology for that, and it, it's not working, that's a big problem. It's like when you're driving and the traffic lights are not working. You know, suddenly everything stops. It's chaos. And another big thing is uh, a lot of people, they're not teachers, they're not sure that they want to change their practice. Even if it looks like this technology might be great, they're not sure that they want to change their practice. You know, this is the way people are. They have things that they're comfortable with. And, uh, um, you know, that's all I'll say about that. So the inquiry. We, we, as I said, we had all kinds of technology that was going underutilized. I could have chosen um, anything to look at. I decided to look at uh, something, uh, lecture capture technology, and what we had on our campus was Tegrity. And my director of IT, he kept saying to me, John, uh, can you please try to use this thing called Tegrity? Nobody's using it. Please try using it. Please, please use it. Use it. And so finally I said, okay, look. I'll try it, I'll see what I think, I'll do a bit of a study on it, and then I'll, I'll let you know what I think about it. All right, and so I decided to, uh, to focus on integrity. As an example of one form of underutilized technology. Uh, it is, as I say, it's classroom. I used it in, as classroom lecture capture technology, probably the technology is more designed for people sitting at their desks, teachers sitting at their desks in their office, recording a video in front of the PC camera um, with PowerPoint slides or something like that um, and to present to their students you know, online. I think Tegrity is more designed for that, not so much designed for teachers in a classroom recording live their lesson, but that's how I used it. So the working hypothesis is, or, so let me go back. The reason I used it in the classroom, I, I didn't really want this technology to add more time to what I need to do on a regular basis. It had to fit into what I was already doing. If I had to sit at my desk and re-record all of my lessons, that would be way too much. I, there's no way I'm going to do that. So I said, look, if this classroom tech, lecture capture technology, if it's going to work in the classroom beside what I need to do anyway, then maybe I'll use it. Maybe it's going, it will be helpful for me. But if it's going to add a lot of work to my life, I'm not interested. So the working hypothesis, if it's too difficult for me to use as a teacher, classroom lecture capture technology, if it's too difficult for me to use as a teacher, then it doesn't matter how beneficial it might be for students, I likely won't adopt it. Um, so the focus of the study is on the teacher here, it's not on the students. If I had a follow-up study, I would focus on the student experience. In this case, uh, a lot of times the teacher is the gatekeeper, who, the one who decides what resources are being used in the classroom. Now, if the teacher doesn't like it, there's a good chance it's not going to get in front of the students. So I was focusing on the teacher experience. 